Psalms 119, verse 25. Dalit, fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. This section from 25 to 32 is uplift of the word. To raise up, to exalt the word. My soul cleaveth unto dust. It's, cleaveth is to sit, it's a stick, adhere, or hold to. And now it's weird because the English language today, you, you think of cleave and you would think of a cleaver. And a cleaver is anything but the stick to adhere to. But the name, I don't know, it would, because I mean, when you're dividing meat, meat will cleave to a bone. But my soul cleaveth unto dust. That, that is what the frame of the body is. It's dust, according to Genesis chapter 2. Quicken. And we learned that from, from last time. Quicken means to be made alive. Quicken thou me according to thy word. So it backs up with 17 to 24. Now, an Old Testament saint did not have the circumcision of the body and soul. Like we do today, we get that circumcision where a born-again Christian, the flesh is circumcised from the soul, and you're not attached. That's why when the flesh sins, it's not a charge to your soul. And quicken life again according to the word. I have declared my ways, and thou, God, heareth me. Telling God everything you do, the wrong and the right. The left and the right. The up and the down. The good and the bad. And God heareth. And we, as, as a result of that is teach me thy statutes. The word is the statutes. Let me understand the word to my ways. Help me to line my ways up with the ways of God. Let me not go in the way of religion. Let me not go in the way of education. Let me walk in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me walk in the way of the Word. And you need to be taught. And Jesus says that the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John today is the teacher of us in what his way is right and what way is wrong. You didn't learn from a preacher. You didn't learn it from me. You learned it by the Word and the Holy Spirit using us because we've studied the Word rightly. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. Now, I told God my ways, verse 26. Now, make me understand thy way. Because my way doesn't always walk with God's way. For the Bible says, all have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. I'm not to walk in my way. I'm to walk in God's way. And when I tell God everything of my ways... I'm asking God to teach me. I'm asking God to make me understand that where I am wrong to walk in the way of God. My thoughts, my anger, my impatience. What does God expect from me? So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Testimony of what God has done in your life. A testimony of what God is doing in your life. A testimony that you are a vessel for God to be used. My soul melteth for heaviness. And there are times of trouble and problems in life. Fears, anxieties, worries, enemies. And where do you run to? Shrink, pills, alcohol, booze, tobacco? He says, strengthen thou me according unto thy word. You go to God in the word for strengthening. When you feel heavy. You don't open a bottle of pills. You don't go run to the doctor. You run to the Word and Lord Jesus Christ and God the Holy Spirit first in prayer. Now, if you need a doctor, you need medicine. Jesus said they that are sick need a physician. You may need, but you need to seek God. Uplift of the Word. It's not, look at what this, what this prescription doctor gave me is doing in my life. It's supposed to be, what is the word doing in my life? I let my light shine. Oh, well, no, you're supposed to let the word shine. You're supposed to speak the word. You're supposed to lift up the word, not your light. If you're lifting up your light, that's you. 
And the problem is, with someone like that, usually their life is so filthy with sin and all that, it's being seen through a clouded lens, a dirty, dirty dusty lens. Remove from me, remove from me the way of lying. Well, that's your doing, too. Here, my mom. You know who are liars. Get away from them. Oh, my boss is a liar. Then you pray to God. If you can't walk away from a liar without getting into trouble, then you rely on God. There are people who lied about Jesus Christ and he didn't walk away. He relied on God the Father. He couldn't walk away. Then he'd be a fugitive from justice. So there are times when you got liars in your life, you need to rely on God to get rid of them. And those liars that lied against Jesus, they've gone their way, and Jesus went his way to the cross. And grant me thy law graciously. And there are things in the law, even though we are not under the law in this day and age, but there are things in the law that if you were to do, it would help you. Physically, spiritually, and actively in your life. Your testimony, your walk. Your conduct. And how people will look at you and, do I want to follow that guy or he's no better than anybody else? He ain't got no answers. I have chosen the way of truth. Okay, we're talking about a way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I have chosen the way of truth. That's the word of God. Sanctify him through thy word. Thy word is truth, John 17, 17 says. The only truth you're going to get is in a Bible, King James 1611 Bible, anything other Bible on the market, any modern Bible is not the truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. There are judgments in this book that you lay before you and you read. And there are some judgments in this book that you read that the consequences, and they don't reflect to you. And you might not do it because you looked at what the consequences are. That's what the word has done for you. You look at what the word says, oh no, I ain't going to do that. And there are some that know their sin in the Bible. They know the consequence. And they choose to do. And they're going to face judgment. They're not going to get out of it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Galatians 6, 7. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. There is a cleave. In verse 25. It gives you the definition of cleave, stuck, stick, adhere to the word, the testimony, to what God has done. O oh Lord, put me not to shame. Okay, God, I'm living by your word. I'm upholding my life by your word. And the word will never fail. Now, you may think it fails, because not all your... Not all of what you're going to get is on this planet. It may be the judgment seat of Christ. It may be resolved in someone else at the great white throne judgment. If you witness somebody and they face the great white throne judgment and they point your finger out, hey, the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. I told him about Jesus. There will be no shame to you. If I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, with my heart I have believed, with my mouth I confess unto salvation, uh, Romans 10, 11, 12, in there, it says there should be no shame. I'm not ashamed of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, as the Bible said. Now listen, if I believe some man, if I believe some religion, or if I believe some education, then that's going to be to your shame later on. Because that's not God's way. Imagine you believe in evolution and standing before God the Creator one day. To your shame. 
Where the Bible says don't commit adultery. Okay, I've never committed adultery. That statement is going to be honest and, and trustworthy at the great at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm not going to be ashamed. How many preachers and, 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 and men of, of God out there have committed adultery and they will be put to shame? Thieves. Stealing. The Bible says thou shalt not steal. I'm not going to be ashamed because I'm a thief because I know what the Bible says. Now, I'm going to be ashamed in other areas of sin in my life. But the Word of God tells me how I'm supposed to conduct myself. It will be to my shame that I have not believed the Word. The Bible tells me I'm to have patience. Well, I'm going to stand ashamed because I don't have patience. And when you read those passages in the New Testament, Paul writes, he gives you a list of things, and patience is there. My life excludes the patience. So it's like a, it's like a modern Bible. It's been cut out. It's going to be my shame. That's going to be there for all eternity, Jesus said the word. But I blotted that out of my life. I will be the one that's ashamed when it comes to my sins. I will run the way of the commandments. I will do what the commandments do. Tell me to do. God commanded me to go in all the world. I'm going to do what God told me to do. God commanded me to try all spirits. God has chosen to. God has commanded me to find that which is good and stick to that. God has told me to, what music I'm to listen to. God has told me what my conduct is to do. Even as a born again Christian in this side of the cross, in the in the scriptures, I can find what the commandment is for God to me. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. Now he's not going to make you know to see the heart growing and you know sticking out of the chest. It's that heart that God fills up for the Christian. It's the, it's the very foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ being put into your heart. But the heart man believes on the righteousness. You get the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you get added to that the Holy Spirit. Then if you memorize Scripture and you add to your heart that we read in verses nine through 16 and your heart gets enlarged 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 with the word with God and you learn new things it's never head it's always the heart why do so many people go to Bible colleges and come out as duds because they went in there for head knowledge and not heart knowledge and it's all the word of God that's to be lifted up 